Here we go. Members of the council, I see we have quorum and I call this meeting of Policy and Priorities Committee to order. I was going to call it P&P, but it's a little informal. Um, <clears throat> first item is the agenda. We have before us an agenda. I have a motion by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, that the agenda for the July 20th, 2015 regular meeting of Policy and Priorities Committee be adopted. Any changes? Call the question. All those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> Disclosure of the community. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. You think I'd know how to do this by now. Um, Council, uh, are there any items on the agenda to which uh, any member has a pecuniary interest or a conflict of interest? No, Mr. Chair. No, Mr. Chair. No, Mr. Chair. Sure. Madam Clerk, could you record that, please? So noted. Thank you. Um, I have a motion by Councillor King that the Policy and Priorities Committee receive the issue summary report entitled Maple Lake or mm -hmm. Advisory Committee and recommend to Council that a Maple Lake or Advisory Committee be established of two members of Council, two members of the Library Board and two members of the Friends of Maple Lake or Library, each member appointed by their respective organizations and that Pelham Library staff participate in an advisory capacity and that the clerk be directed to contact the library board and the Friends of Maple Lake or Library to seek such representation and that council appoint two members to this committee at their next regular meeting. Discussion. Council Ribiak. Thank you. It's, um, it's a good motion. The question that I would have is with respect to terms of reference for that committee. Have they been developed? Are they suggested anywhere? Or Mr. Geo. Uh, not formal terms of reference uh, from other exercises in this type of endeavor we will be taking particular care in the development of the terms of reference which we'll present once the committee has been formed and I'll work collaboratively with the clerk on that. Thank you and, and I, I would think that it would be really important to have them very very clear mm -hmm. and sharply defined. Okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just, um, I totally agree with the recommendation and I think um, when reviewing this uh, committee, it was a similar structure that was uh, struck by council to, to look at the matter and it, and it worked very, very well. Balancing off uh, really all the uh, both from a council perspective, uh, from the community perspective, i.e. with the friends, but also from a library perspective as well. And um, <coughs> in terms of a, a terms of reference, I agree that we, you know that is required. But I would assume that it would be similar to some of the other um, committees that have been involved in design builds. I think of uh, Fire Station Number Three in North Pelham that worked very, very effectively. Um, and I, you know, I I would suspect that the terms of reference would be fashioned in that way. Uh, in, in working with the committee. So just wanted to uh, add comment that Thank you. supportive of it and that uh, the committee, as was fashioned before, uh, worked very, very well together. Thank you. Any other for further comments? Uh, I, if I may have the liberty, uh, I have a question. Why do we need to defer our appointment uh, to the next regular meeting? Uh, we, we have two members that sat on the committee initially and if we're following that, that trend, uh, they already have the expertise and some background on it. Uh, why couldn't we appoint them tonight and be done with it and rather than bring it back to the table? I, I ask it as a question uh, to the committee. Council Ribby. Perhaps because Council ought to make the decision and take a recommendation from this meeting? <clears throat> well, that's what I'm suggesting, Councillor, that we would recommend to Council to people. I think that's what that says. It does? I think so. No, it says Council. It says appoint. Oh, committee. The council appointed members to this committee. Oh, no. No. Whatever you like. I don't want to belabor the issue. I just raised the question. If not, we'll move on with the, the recommendation as it is. Okay. Well, let's carry on. It, 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 a committee could recommend to council um, the appointment, so you're quite right, Mr. Chair. That was my thought, Mr. Mayor. So. Mr. CEO, you have to might, might I recommend to Councillor to Committee that you pass this um, this motion, and then it's open for a member of Council to uh, pass, pass a second motion, making yep. a specific recommendation of individuals for appointment. Thank you. That sounds very wise. We'll call this question that's on the table. If all is in agreement, motion is presented. 
carried. Opposed? None? Okay. Floor is open for any further discussion with this matter. If not, we will, nominate the appointment myself. will be deferred until not be decided. Oh, I'd like to nominate Councillor Papp uh, to serve on the committee. And you. And I will nominate Mayor Augustine <laughs> to serve on the committee. Let's get it over with. Good work. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Any teeth. It's like... Oh, no, no offense against you. That's <laughs> <No, laughs> not my territory. I don't want him to call a conflict, eh? <laughs> no offense. I didn't mean it that way. Okay. No. Is there any? You don't need a second. I guess. Uh, no. The question would be in the in the additional nominations. That's that's what I'm looking for. Is there any ad additional nominations? No. no. That's good. If not, everybody's satisfied with it. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. So We're back at it again. <laughs> by Councillor King, seconded by, we don't need a seconder. Right now. So that uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Councillor Papp would be appointed to uh, Maple Leaf Committee. Call the question. All those in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, colleagues. <clears throat> we know you'll do an excellent job. Thank, Thank you, Justice. <laughs> Motion by Councilor Ribiak, seconded by Councilor King, that the Policy and Priorities Committee receive issue summary report, temporary works policy S1015, and that committee recommend to Council that pro the policy be approved, and that policy work S-08, road occupant, occupation permit control be repealed and replaced by this policy. Discussion? Right. Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just to a question for uh, for clarity. The uh, report talks about private work occasionally being discovered on, or to be occurring without staff knowledge, review, or approval, I guess, on town lands. I'm just wondering about examples of that. What are we talking about specifically? Madam Director. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, this was uh, feedback that I had from staff. So we do mm -hmm. occasionally have um, feedback through the building department that there might be plans for a new service or a new tap, uh, say for a, a house being put up, um, but we don't necessarily know when that's going to happen or the details. The building department gives us the courtesy of letting us know this is in the plans, but the, count, the um, contractor doesn't necessarily contact us right. to say we're ready, we're digging up the road, it's just we're here, we've got it excavated can we go and, and there's no um, process in place. Okay, okay, no, I understand. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I guess I can think of just some recent examples, um, a good one being on Canberra Road at the corner of, of Belfour, just sort of east of that, east of Belfour, um, a number of homes that are being put in in some infill, infill areas and it's really dug up the road in, in essence and the contractors filled in the road. So one of the one of the conversations that I've had with other municipalities is that when some of those road cuts occur, um, that they actually uh, take monies for that and contemplate paving a larger area. Um, it's sort of to make sure that there aren't those those cuts, that it's a nice seamless area, especially when you know that development's going to other developments going to occur. Is that allowed in this policy as written or is this just simply on one-offs. Madam Director. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, it is. It would be in the form. The second page has the conditions of restoration, and we're pointing to town standards. Okay. Those town standards are drafted at this point, so we could take that into consideration. Right now, it would be just a direct <coughs> replacement of the cut, um, backfill, tamping, and layers, <coughs> and then restoring the asphalt. But we could open that up to say that. It's Town standard requirement to make it a wider restoration area to avoid that subtle and depressed area. <coughs> okay, thank you. So that's going to be looked at. I'm, I'm yep. pleased to hear that. Another <coughs> is, um, and I think this would this policy would cover this. I'm very supportive of the policy, but something like the works that occurred in this predated um, uh, the director, but um, works that occurred in Ridgeville where a utility that I won't name called Bell Telephone um, came in and, and did some works along the road in the middle of the winter. There was a complaint. There were some issues. I won't get into it, but they had to come back 
um, and restore, in essence, that entire area. So does this policy, I guess we can compel the work to be done. So does this, does this policy then allow us to, yes. to do that, to compel work if it's not to the town standard? To you, Mr. Right. Chair, it does. The language is quite strong in there, saying that uh, the security is held in lieu of um, the work that's getting done for a year. If we were not able to get the restoration to be corrected within time period to the standards that we want, then we would use that security money to go towards it. Okay. Okay. And, and, and I think another, another example would be here at Pelham Town Square near the former LCBO. They're doing some work here. I noticed the last couple of days. Is that this policy would then apply in that situation as well? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, it does. Okay. Yeah. So then just quickly, Mr. Chair, to the security, am I reading that right, that the security amount, I'm going to say only, uh, is only $1,500? Is that correct? Madam Clerk. It is correct, but it is certainly open for suggestions. Well, I, I guess, suggestions. thank you. Uh, it would seem to me that if, if you're doing a road cut, maybe it's 1500 but if you're doing, like I would think that the, the security deposit should be um, appropriate to the work that's being done and maybe there needs to be a scale of that so in the case of Ridgeville I'm sure that was a multi-thousand dollar let's say a ten thousand dollar twenty thousand dollar work um, can that be can that be looked at uh, mr. chair so are you suggesting um, mr. mayor that this be well it's no I'm not back no I think the policy is great it, it's and and the policy says that a refundable deposit should be secured to the town for a period of one year um, to ensure the work restoration um, we could amend the, the policy to say representative of the work um, because it's just currently a flat fee mm -hmm. you know it makes sense that we charge the administrative inspection fee that's fine but a refundable deposit should be dis so I'm thinking of we do work um, somebody brings out a building permit we put a, a people pay a deposit to make sure that if they damage any of the, the town assets so may, maybe that needs to be clarified or maybe if you can just take that as, as direction to say should it not be the deposit should be representative on a scale representative of the work that's to be done Perhaps we could ask the CBO uh, uh, to comment on how, how, how do we scale the security with respect to the building permits? Is, is there a sliding scale that we use? Or? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it's $500 damage deposit for curbs is what uh, it is presently. I see. So it's just a flat fee as well? Correct. Mm -hmm. I see. So, okay. yes, Mr. CBO. Uh, might have suggest then that council is um, going to approve the policy, mm -hmm. uh, the temporary works application. We can take a second look at and report back uh, at the next count meeting. Yeah. Council, yeah. Satisfied. Yeah, that's uh, again. It's our our level's policy work. So I don't know if we need to put a word in there saying representative of the work to be done, whatever that is. But but that it's. Uh, I think it's there to ensure the work and restoration meets the requirements of the town for that period. But I think. It, part of that means that maybe there needs to be a sliding scale of, uh, of fees. So I just ask staff to take a look at that. So if staff takes that as a direction, when we see the final policy at council, it will be amended and we can talk about it further at that point? Okay, I'm That's fine with that, Mr. With Chair. That. Thank you. Any further comments on that? Uh, Councilor Rivian. Th thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, it'll probably come back, but I guess one of the things that, 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 that might be looked at is, is to determine whether that amount is meant to cover the cost or whether it's meant to be motivational in, in, in inspiring the uh, the individual to get it done because he's got some some skin in the game so maybe that can be addressed as well so we know uh, what, what the rationale behind it is that can be included in the direction I think. thank you anything for this with Good. liberty I, I'd like to ask a couple of questions I, I so far we're talking about major works like you know putting in a water line or connecting a sewer where there's obvious damage to the public uh, space what about situations uh, where let's say somebody's improving the facade of their building they've got new facade works going to be coming up so they'll be using lifts on the uh, public through fair and on the on the sidewalk and disrupting traffic and uh, so what's the breadth of 
that this policy is going to cover and sort of if we're looking at a scale we might be looking at a lesser amount than mm -hmm. than that for minor work so uh, is that applicable to this policy or do we have another policy where there's an encroachment yeah, I think it would be temporarily to to allow lifting etc uh, uh, madam uh, director I'm just looking back at the how might we statement and the intention of this was also to include temporary occupation and the uh, clerk and I did review this to make sure we were comparing apples to apples um, a different issue with encroachment say people building fences or uh, encroaching with their own private plans into town property but this is meant to be temporary occupation both the risk to the infrastructure and be present on town land to do work or have scissor lifts or whatever it might be but I'm wondering maybe if the how might we statement isn't strong enough to include the, the temporary occupation piece it's in the key facts saying right. that it's their work practices solution, are, are an issue right. um, occupation within a municipal road allowance in the solution statement it's, it's the there it's certainly the spirit behind it we can mm -hmm. strengthen mm -hmm. the words if, mm -hmm. if it's felt it needs to be stronger so perhaps when you're considering the security deposit we maybe have to look at that and, and the fact that we're going to hold it for a year if it's a temporary occupancy to go on and lift the sign up and you know attach it to the front of a building they're encroaching on our properties but a visual inspection might be able to ensure us that, that they haven't cracked the sidewalk or broken the curb or anything of that nature that would need immediate remedial work to withhold the a deposit for a year of, on a s simple thing like that seems onerous to me. It understood, to and me. Uh, the simple solution is one well, one well. general sum for all the activities. That yes. is, uh, in response to Councillor Ruby, Rubiak's question, it is meant to really to be a motivator to get right. the work corrected, right. Right. not to cover the cost. It's right. very rare that we actually can recoup the full cost, right. but to have a sliding scale or at least a table that right. yeah. so. The, right. the question that comes to us is we get um, criticized for if we go case by case then how come my neighbor down the road only had to spend thousand right. mm -hmm. dollars deposit and we need to be able to have a strong position for that but as long as it's detailed that would be fine so maybe we need to look at the, the holding period though the warranty period of, of one year in some circumstances I think would be be onerous mm -hmm. um, also wondered whether we should include an, indi in a, an indemnification component here where the uh, constructor indemnifies the town and provides uh, insurance coverage uh, and that may be understood here but that we could be named as a uh, party to the insurance if they're actually getting into doing work on our, our property. I believe it's in there that it, uh, the I, insurance I documents it, are required and, and we're named as okay. insured, additional insured, yep. Okay. Thank you. Call a question. All those in favor. Chair, just maybe yes, so sorry. if staff could look at that, maybe it should be a number five refundable deposit <coughs> for up to one year. Yeah. Like it's really depending on the work. So if somebody's getting a scissor lift to put a sign up, as you said. Right. Okay, everything's fine. Let's hold on to it for a little bit and then release it. But if it's a road and it might settle, yeah. then it would be the year period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe that uh, I don't know if you need that so amendment, that but uh, I think we could put that in the in the uh, direction. Yeah, going to word tweak this. I guess the other I just looked at my notes and I apologize for jumping into the discussion. Um, the the fact that if it's deemed to be unsafe, any circumstance at the sole direction of the director, um, I kind of always worry about putting sold the discretion of a to in the hands of one person uh, it puts that one person in a tenuous situation and uh, uh, so I don't know whether there needs to be some wordsmithing around that and maybe you could have a look at that and, and what best practices are in that particular area anything further that we want staff to look at when they're polishing it in general, I, I think everybody's happy with the policy. Mm -hmm. I think we just need a few tweaks, uh, Madam Director, if possible. Okay. If everybody's happy, I'm going to call a question. All those in favor? 
Opposed? That was carried. And I have a motion by Councillor Papp that the Policy and Priorities Committee receive the email correspondence dated <coughs> July 13, 2015 from Rhonda, Ireland regarding the pedestrian crosswalk situated at Pancake Lane and Pelham Street to be received and that the correspondence be referred to public works staff for consideration in reviewing the pedestrian crosswalk signalization systems along Pelham Street. Any discussion? Councillor Papp. Just quickly, and I'm looking forward to it just because there isn't a day that goes by there is confusion. People trying to figure out how to get across those streets. So I think uh, you've brought up some very good points. The region, originally some of us remember on Highway 20 at St. Alexander's, those six second delays are, they're going to stick by, but people are taking chances going across there. Just the other day, I saw people with the light running across. So anyhow, I look forward to the uh, input. The interesting thing is, uh, Councillor, we have a report following up here where it yep. speaks, in fact, to mm -hmm. some of the issues that are raised by this email. So yeah, I saw that. I, I, saw, oh, I, I jumped ahead. I saw the other. Yeah, yeah no, so that's fine. That's sorry. So, uh, Councillor Junkin. One other uh, question. I've often, the, the purpose of these crosswalks is to get from one side of Pelham Street to the other, right? Basically, that's yeah. it. So, I've always wondered why these have to be put at intersections. Why can't you go halfway down the block and then have the lights? That was a two-year debate, Councillor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> some. <laughs> and what discussion was it? Was and how come they didn't? Well, it seems so, because that way... Mid-block and all that. Yeah, yeah but, all of a sudden everything's solved. How come, how come that didn't... In fact, not wanting to go back to To make a very button. long story uh, short, the yeah. uh, working committee of residents and Pelham Active Transportation and town staff yeah. came back to council with a recommendation that that's where they be put and that they not be full signals but that they in fact be uh, mm -hmm. pedestrian uh, crosswalks All and right. then they were erected and the concerns continued to uh, yeah. rear their heads and so yeah. we've been waiting for the report that's coming up here very shortly so okay okay yep thank you Anybody else <laughs> want to feed into Councillor Johnson's uh, no. comments then? perfectly wonderful yeah. answer Okay, I'm going to call a question that we receive uh, the email correspondence. All those in favor? Thank you. And a motion by Councillor King, seconded by, well, I have told, pardon me, that, I have a motion by Councillor Pat <coughs> that the Policy and Priorities Committee receive issue summary report pedestrian priority signals on Pelham Street for information. Madam Director, do you want to just make a brief comment about your report and uh, your recommendations for clarity to the public? I certainly can. Um, this is an update report. We're not done. I wanted to make sure that right. something got said as we promised to where we're at and what we're doing. But the short-term measure is to at least get some signage up as soon as possible. The number one concern I'm getting is that it's the approaches right. to Pelham Street that are the number one concern for vehicles turning, mm -hmm. not realizing, myself included, new to the area, um, not realizing it's a pedestrian crossing. So this was the quick and dirty fix to at least buy us some time while the region and Pelham work together to look into what else can be done and what kind of costs are involved um, to further correct this. And I will note the region is not uh, how should I say this? They aren't agreeing that there is a need for change. Mm -hmm. They say these are installed region-wide, Ontario-wide, and it takes time for people to get used to how they work and, and, and accustomed to it. Um, but that said, I'm still asking that they go ahead and give us some ideas of what other options we have um, for correction. Thank you. So the short-term fix is to try and educate the public as to the existence of these these uh, pedestrian crosswalks and how they work by the use of the sign and increase alertness as they approach those intersections it is yes the ch change in the delay was resisted from the region because that's uh, documented and they are considered more of the authority on the um, mm -hmm. highway traffic act and how the interpretations of that are carried forward we were resistant to make that change okay. Um, but the signage they feel is in conformance 
and uh, a start anyways, and then we can continue on. Thank you for that clarity. Any other questions around the question? Not? Yeah. Oh, Madam, uh, Councilor King. If I may, Mr. Chair, um, to the director, because the region is not in agreement, um, that is not to say that the information that has come forward from both the general public, um, our own studies that we've undertaken, and information from the Active Transportation Committee is not going to seriously be taken into consideration. For you, Mr. Chair, we are seriously still going ahead with asking them for other options and costing, even though they are suggesting we give it time and let everybody get used to it. We are still wanting to at least explore what our options are. Yeah, I understand that, um, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yep, carry on, Councillor King. That has been in existence for a year. We already know um, the outcome of the situation, particularly at Pelham and Churchill. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw that in to say that we really need to look into it because although the region doesn't think <coughs> we may have a problem, we do seriously have a problem. Understood. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Just just to underscore what um, both Councillor King and, and, and Councillor Junkin are saying, <coughs> um, the six-second delay that the region recommends, we just heard the director talk about it, is, is that regardless whether it's a crosswalk or street light or, or like is that that's everywhere it's six second delay is that correct regardless of speed it could be 60 could be 70 six seconds Madam Director. for you mr. chair it is they had said it's a, um, uh, a signal a uh, precursor <coughs> having the pedestrian waiting is like a, a initial warning for drivers that there's someone waiting to cross and it puts them into caution mode then the light goes yellow and then they proceed because the initial request was to eliminate that delay mm -hmm. entirely to zero or two seconds which they strongly recommended against they said there is a visual cue from the person standing there next to the pole um, they did say that they could shorten it to five seconds or four four seconds if we requested but six seconds is the standard across the region anyways Okay, thank you. So it, it reminded me when Councillor Junkin spoke about it first, your answer reminded me of the years of debate about this and I think the other piece is that some folks in the community were hopeful that and I think Council was compelled as well with the idea that there was the potential that these could turn into fully signalized intersections and that's why they were built in that way that this could, could be, especially at let's say Pancake and Pelham, it could be an interim step and then it could turn into a fully signalized intersection should the growth occur of traffic. So that was sort of part of the reason why. But it reminds me, um, Councillor Junkin, when you spoke about it, of being in Halifax uh, last last year, um, mid-block, downtown, busy street, you push the button almost instantaneously, yeah. the thing changes, everybody stops, you walk across. Now again, mid-block. And uh, I, you know, I, I think it's something that, that we should look at for future. Uh, Mid-block might be the right way to cross. Now, granted, in that particular situation, was there parking on either side? I can't remember. Um, that might be a factor as well in terms of the, the, of the design. Um, but it does cause problems uh, and challenges where they are now. So one thing I would ask the director to look at is... Um, especially visu visual cues for somebody coming down Churchill, for instance. So I saw it just last week. Um, somebody pushed the button, There's the traffic stops, and there's a lineup on Churchill coming down, wanting to turn left. Somebody's walking across, the person comes, oh, and they see the person halfway across. They did not know, for whatever reason, or didn't seem to know, that there was actually the crossing occurring and and I don't know if it's because there isn't a light facing up the hill there's nothing they got to kind of look around the corner of the right. <laughs> of the signal but if it was a fully signalized intersection they would see those lights green you can go or yellow or red or whatever it is so 
I would ask the director to, and I'm sure that's in the consideration, but maybe something there that there can be something so that drivers coming down uh, and turning left can see. I think that would help. Also, yeah, I think maybe the, maybe the delay, what is the best practice? Okay, maybe the region's the expert here, but what else works somewhere else? Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this being resolved because as Councillor King said, it, is, it has been a year. And as you said, two years before that too. So, I caution colleagues to convert to full signal. Uh, you're looking in the realm of $180,000 per signal. Mm -hmm. We only get a credit for 18,000 bucks that's there. So that's a very serious consideration as well. So I look forward to the follow-up reports. I see this as a good initial step and uh, try to create some visual clues and our cues and let's see how it works. The thing, and I think you alluded to this, and uh, Councillor Durley will, I'll say, recall, recall this fondly. We did have a creative problem solving uh, process with some residents, especially in the area of Pelham Street and um, uh, Pancake, where some solutions were recommended, adopted by Council. Uh, most of them have occurred, but some of them haven't. One of them was uh, line painting. Mm -hmm. uh, which hasn't occurred and it was hoped that that would assist mm -hmm. with some of the speeds as well. So maybe uh, Mr. Chair staff could look at that, uh, pull out that report and see if there could be some uh, additional changes or improvements. Good point. To that. Thank, you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Not call a question. All those in favor? Motion is carried. And colleagues, I have a motion by Councillor Durley that this regular meeting of Policy and Priorities Committee be adjourned until the next regular Committee of the Whole scheduled for Monday, August 4th, Tuesday, August 4th, 2015, unless sooner called by the Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Now, we